Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to show you how to turn simple wire structures into wearable art using a material called plastic dip. Some of you might know this material as tool dip because you can use it to add handles to your pliers if they fall off. Over here you can see where I've turned a piece of wire into a pendant or a charm for a necklace and I've also created a very dimensional earring. Now to get started the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to experiment and make some, some samples so that you can see how the material performs over your wire structures. You want to try to use different gauges and profiles of wire. You can see on the right here that I've got a yellow, red, and blue sample. That's because the material, besides coming in black, also comes in primary colors. Now if you need a special color, it's best to contact the company directly and order it because this material is a little messy and hard to mix. Now, you can see that these samples have some areas where the materials close the open form and other areas where it's left it open. You're going to have to experiment to kind of determine how wide or how large your openings need to be to stay open, or you can use a tool to poke them and make them open up manually. Alright, let me move this out of the way and I'll show you what you need to get started. While I'm doing that, let me just mention to you that in all of our videos, we normally mention that you need to check our safety video. Now for this project, you're not going to do anything too scary or messy, but it's always a good idea to at least wear an apron and some eye protection. Now, one of the first things that you want to do when you start is just take a coat hanger and make it so that you have a drying rack because you're going to have to hang these things to dry. So you'll have to have your drying rack ready and you'll want to probably put underneath it some kind of paper to catch the material that's going to fall down. Now, you'll also want to have some wire to work with. Now, I have two different gauges of wire from the hardware store. This is blackened annealed steel wire and it's in 24 and 19 gauge. You'll also need some pliers for this particular job and a pair of wire cutters. Now, you don't need anything too fancy. You could even get away with using your fingers, but you will need something for sure to cut the right lengths of wire. The pliers are good for tucking in the ends or for making nice round loops. If you watch the videos that we have on making a fibula or a wire wrapped earring, you will learn the processes for making the shapes and connections that you need to be successful with this project. Okay, let me show you some of the samples that I prepared for you. Now, if you remember that first earring that I brought out, I'll bring it back so you can see it. Here it is. I've made two similar frameworks so I can just show you what they look like before and after. And I've made some other shapes for you as well. I thought that these little twists would be really easy. They're simply just extended or elongated bead cages. Now I've also made a large pendant framework to go with the earrings and if you get really ambitious and you watch our fibula video, I've made an extra fibula right here that I'm also going to dip as well so you can see what happens to that. So these are the samples that I'm going to play with today. Now in order to hang them from the drying rack, I've had to make some little wires that look kind of familiar to some people. They look like the wires that you would use to hang Christmas ornaments on your tree. You, not, you want something that's very easy to put on and take off and that will give you a nice clearance on the drying rack so that it's not scraping the bottom. Now, here's the material. This is the plastic dip. Now, don't be fooled by the color of the can because they all look the same, you got to read and see what color is inside. So I have a yellow, I have a black, a blue, and a red. Now, like I said, these are a little bit messy and difficult to mix on your own. So if you need a special color, contact the company directly. Alright, so I am going to put 
these over to the side and I'm going to start with the black. Now do this outside if possible or in a very well ventilated area. You can see I've got my ventilation right here. It gives off fumes and you don't want to breathe these in. Now the material needs at least four hours to properly cure but it dries in about 30 minutes and you want to keep the container well sealed in between periods when you're working so that it doesn't dry out. You might also need to stir it up occasionally. Okay, so let me open the can. It's gooey and sticky. It looks kind of like tar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wire onto one of the earrings so that I can sink it in and pull it out. And I would recommend that it's a good idea at this point just to bend that wire over so that your framework doesn't slip and go all the way down to the bottom of your can. And all you need to do is just gently drop it in and slowly pull it right back out and then hang it on your drying rack. Now I used a very, very thin gauge wire for these. These are 24 gauge wire, but you can see how the tool dip, once it's attached to it, it thickens up and makes it look much more substantial. Now you'll notice on this pendant that I've combined steel and copper wires, and I've only left the copper visible, and that's because it's probably a little nicer than looking at the steel which could actually rust but I think this will make a very nice and dramatic pendant. I'll put that a little bit away from the others so that they don't stick together. All right, I'm gonna change colors. I'm tired of black. Let's switch to something a little bit more fun. How about I take the yellow and put a little bit of yellow on one of my samples. Now the thing that's kind of fun about adding a color is that I don't have to coat the whole thing if I don't want to. I could leave a definite line. Just like that. There we go. It's a little messy, a little drippy, but it'll be just fine on the drying rack. Okay. Now let's go for something a little bit bigger and bolder and maybe even a little more fun. Let's deal with the fibula. Now, I'm going to dip it in the blue. I think the blue on the copper will look nice. Something to think about your metal color. Now this is a much more dimensional piece. This one has a pin back and a front of it and I kind of want to avoid getting it on the catch and the pin back. So I'm going to be a little bit careful in the way that I dip it. So I'm going to hold it by the hanging item and the pin back and drop it in. Okay, I got a little bit on my fingers. I got a little bit on the pin back. No problem. Just wipe that off. You kind of want to make room so that you avoid getting colors on different things. That's all there is to it. Have fun, enjoy this project, be safe, and check out our videos and products on our website, theonlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.